everyone. Welcome to another edition of Founder Wisdom Podcast, Rapid Fire Edition. Today we have Matt Wallach with us. He is CEO of Ringbot, which is an interesting company. And I'm going to fire him a bunch of uh, interesting questions in a moment. So uh, Matt, can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about Ringbot? Yeah, thank you. Uh, appreciate you having me on, Charles. It's uh, a lot of fun. But basically, Ringbot is a system that does business to business texting so that businesses can automate their texting process. They can reach their customers better. They can capture website visitors. And we primarily target marketing agencies, companies who are looking to add some revenue because they can white label our system and sell it to their clients. Why did you decide to start Ringbot and what values can we see throughout the company? I actually bought it. It had been operating uh, for a couple of years and has mm. hundreds of clients. It's doing great. Uh, mm. But we saw that it was in a potential growth opportunity and the owner had other things going on and he wasn't able to take it uh, any further. And so he uh, unloaded it to us and it's been a lot of fun. We have great people. We have awesome customers that are already a part of our great community and we're growing and scaling quickly. So it's been a lot of fun. What values can we see in the company uh, with the clients and the employees? Uh, accountability, we're big on. Everybody takes responsibility, ownership, and personal growth. We're always committed to making sure that everybody is is getting themselves improved, finding new ways to better themselves, and and just get better and better every day. Love it. Talking personal growth, what does your morning routine and your day to day look like? Uh, my morning routine, I get up pretty early, five a.m. about wow. uh, every single day because uh, I have clients in Europe. Uh, uh, another thing I do is I coach SaaS companies. I coach yeah. businesses and help them grow and scale. And so, uh, I get up and talk to uh, my friends in Europe pretty early. I also have a couple little girls who need to go to school and get off and get going. So, uh, I'm up hustling early. And then the second half of the day is when I kind of relax and work out. So what habits have you adopted in your day to day to keep healthy, for example, and, you know, just being more productive in your business and in your life? Yeah, for sure. As I've gotten older in terms of keeping healthy, I've uh, noticed that that's more and more necessary. So I try to stay active. I try to walk my dog. Uh, I go to the gym a few times a week. I, I try to always do something to stay active, stay mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of staying healthy, uh, a long time ago, I cut out soda and all the sugar with soda. <laughs> I loved soda. So it was a hard thing, but uh, I feel better about myself now that that's all cut out. Yeah, for sure. And when it gets hard in, in business, um, what do you do? How do you think? What's your mindset advice there? Uh, you, you know what? I When it gets hard, I always buckle down and I always love finding a, an answer, finding a solution. I think it's really important to, to go through those hard times. If everything was easy, it wouldn't be that much fun. Uh, I remember playing sports as a kid, those games where we just kind of blew out the other team, they weren't really that fun. The, the, the games where it was tight and hard and we eventually squeaked it out and won, that was great. And so those are the things that I love in business as well. When we're working hard and we pull together as a team, we find new ways of doing things and we solve problems, that's really fun. Yeah, tough times uh, make good stories, as I like to say. Um, and yeah, it's important to surround yourself with good people in your business. So how do you find these a players and how do you retain them? Good question. So for A players, I've, I've always loved hiring on culture. I know that, um, you know, you might be able to find somebody who's got amazing experience for 10 or 20 years and this and that. I, I, did, I look for culture. Can you fit into our, our team? We've got a great team, a great dynamic. Uh, everybody's really focused on, on helping each other and helping the company. Are you going to fit with us and our values and, and somebody who's going to add to that? How do I keep them? I give them accountability and empower them to take over and say, hey, here's where we need to be. You're smart. Figure out how to get there. I'm here to support you. I'm here to help you and guide you. But uh, I want you to take ownership on this. And I think people really appreciate that and love that and, and thrive on it. Is that one, uh, one of your top sales strategies for your salespeople to be truly accountable and slash entrepreneurs uh, in their own fields? How do you make sure that uh, they keep on selling consistently? Yeah, I mean, salespeople, they're definitely different than managing other types of people. They're much more individually focused. And so nurturing that and getting them to continue to push for the accountability, ownership, and, and taking pride in what they are doing. Essentially, their book of business is kind of like their own little mini business. I love how you put that. And if you can work with them to build their business and grow their own business, then obviously it's going to help the company overall. And so that's one thing I do is work with companies that, that uh, need that and need to grow and help them get to those levels. 
What are your, some of your favorite sales software that you use? Uh, sales software. Well, I mean, for, in terms of CRM, HubSpot's the one I always recommend. I am yeah. a certified startups partner with HubSpot. Uh, it's a great system. It's something I use with my own SaaS companies and it's uh, really easy and slick. In terms of other software, in ter out, one thing I do recommend, don't do cold outreach through HubSpot. Do it through other systems. Uh, outreach is one of them. Apollo is another of them. There's a few of them that are really great. Um, and I, I'm, it's probably not good, but I'm big on Slack. Our team communicates, we're very remote. So we just communicate on Slack all day, every day, making sure we're staying in touch. Yeah, for sure. Um, Slack is interesting. We use Microsoft Teams here. Apollo, we do use uh, HubSpot, the email marketing version of it and the pipeline is pretty cool. So yeah, very good uh, recommendations here. Uh, when it comes to sales book recommendations to your team, what do you often recommend that they read? Uh, the number one sales book I've ever read is the challenger sale. And it was big Good for one. me. It totally revolutionized my own sales process and what I was doing. I used to be kind of a relationship builder. I thought that yeah. everybody, you know, I should be friends with everybody and it totally changed the game for me and, and made me realize, Hey, I'm, I'm not there to be friends. I'm, I'm there to help somebody and guide them. And the way to do that is to make sure they fully understand what they are supposed to do and what's out there and what needs to happen. And so the challenger sale changed that for me. I give it to all my clients. Uh, as a gift, I give it to my, my salespeople. They need to be able to understand how it works. What general advice would you have for young salespeople? Uh, learn as much as possible. Keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. Don't stop. Find the best books you can, find the best articles, the videos, and then find mentors. Uh, I used to have some really great mentors. I now mentor a couple people as well. And definitely, if you can find people who've been there, done that, and co can coach you and help you and guide you along, it's going to be, be worth just so much for you. And I guess it would be similar advice to, to young farmers. Also, the similar advice that I give, the learning and education part is so uh, important. Uh, regarding this, do you have like a, a guiding quote for them when uh, the, the times get hard? What would you mention to them? And do you have like a, 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 gui a guiding quote yourself? Yeah. I mean, one of the quotes that I always love is, um, it's Tony Robbins. And he says, if you ever want to be successful, just find someone else who's done what you're trying to do yeah. and model it. Yeah. And it's so good. And it's so true because I have, so I also am a SaaS coach. I help SaaS companies and they've struggled for so long. And then they come to me and I share some anecdotes. I share some, uh, some formulas, some processes. And it's so crazy when they plug these in click, it just starts working. And they're always like, we can't believe we waited so long to, to get the answers from you. Just find someone who has the answers and go from there. It's so much quicker, so much easier. Yeah, true. Like masterminds are, are super good for that as well. So, I mean, you being a founder and a sales guy, you must have had like um, crazy stories that you mentioned to your founders that you're coaching every now and then. So was there like one time that you fail particularly hard and how did you recover from that? <laughs> that I fell hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've had, I've had lots of them. Um, I've had several opportunities to, to fail and I've definitely done that. One of the things that I did when I was scaling my first SaaS company, I thought that, oh, okay, we're starting to grow. We're starting to see results. I'm selling, it's working. I'm just going to bring in a sales guy mm. and make sure he has a good background and he's going to do great. He came in great background, great experience and nothing. He couldn't sell a <laughs> thing. And it was so frustrating. I didn't know what was going on. And I realized it wasn't his fault. It was mine because I hadn't given him the proper steps for success. I hadn't given him the proper process. He, he wasn't able to do it. And so I learned the hard way, spending a lot of time and money yeah. that you need to have the right formulas and the right process for your people so they can thrive. Yeah, onboarding guides, videos, uh, one on ones with, with them. I also learned that the, the hard way multiple times, not only once, at least five to 10 times. So that, that was pretty brutal. But yeah, good lesson right there. Um, what does the future look like in, in your field? You can talk about uh, ring bots and you can also talk about sales as a general. What does the future look like there? Well, at Ringbot, we have an a awesome texting solution. And right now, people yeah. are seeing a lot more move to texting in terms mm -hmm. of part of their outreach as well as their customer engagement. Just society as a whole, everybody's texting more. And, yeah. you, you know, especially as the, as the generations get younger, they're texting way more than emailing. My daughter's like, they only want to text. They don't want to email at all. So uh, any companies that are targeting 
anybody less than 50 years old, that's kind of the move. And we're seeing a lot more companies doing it. Besides, texting gets an open rate that's 98%. Emails have a 21% open rate. So it's yeah. not very, very easy or not very hard to realize you've got to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of coaching, more and more people are realizing they want to be in the SaaS game and more and more people want to grow a SaaS company and exit. And that's what I help them do. And so I think that's just going to continue to grow. I'm, I'm really excited about both industries. Super cool, Matt. Thank you for the advice that you dropped today. Where can people find out more about you and Ringbot? Yeah, so Ringbot is just ringbot.io, R-I-N-G-B-O-T.io. Or you can get to me at mattwallach.com, W-O-L-A-C-H.com. Matt, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Charles. Appreciate it.